Hallman or Hamen? Hallman. The Hallman crew. Hallman. Yeah. No yeah, baby. That's what I'm saying. There's no L in there. Ha. Huh. No. Oh, my lord. Already out. <laughs> Coming out to headlines. Both mics. It'll be server A on the X with your music. 50 now. Stand by. Five, four, three, two, one. Hey, lines up. Let's go. Football's kind of just around the corner, but it hardly feels like that kind of weather. Race Football beat, weather. Or An or excessive D, heat D, D. warning goes into place tomorrow with it shaping up to be a dangerously hot weekend. D roll, son. She wasn't an innocent bystander. She participated in this all the way. Go. A Rowlett woman is sentenced to life in prison for a beat. murder plot that left a romantic rival dead. Fort Worth police say the woman who fatally struck one of their officers admitted she was drunk at the time. What she told detectives in newly released court documents. And a nurse who so tried to help during a chaotic attack on 635 ended up caught in the melee herself. How she's recovering and processing what happened. Here for you, the news leader, Box 4. Parts of North Texas will fall under an excessive heat warning tomorrow with heat indexes potentially climbing higher than 110 degrees. Hello, everybody. I'm Heather Hayes. I'm Steve Eager. It's 9 o'clock. Be prepared. The shaded part of the practice field was prime real estate as the South Oak Cliff football team Wait, held their first full pad practice of the season. Anyone who has to be outside tomorrow is urged to take some extra precautions. Oh, Chief Dan Meteorologist Allen. Dan Henry Dan. Yeah, heat's going to be uh, at uh, dangerous okay. levels here, I think, uh, not awesome. only tomorrow, but right through the upcoming weekend. So we're currently under a heat advisory that gets upgraded to an excessive heat warning so starting at noon tomorrow and continuing through 9 o'clock for all of the Dallas-Fort Worth area and points east with a uh, heat advisory continuing for southern and western portions of the area. Again, the difference, heat advisory means heat index values up to 109. When you get to 110 or higher, that's when an excessive heat warning is issued. Still pretty toasty out there at this late hour, mid-90s across the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Out west, 92 Mineral Wells, 87 in Canton. And there's the scorcher scale. Heat index forecast for tomorrow, 110. There have been some showers and thunderstorms this evening brewing up here in southern Oklahoma. Much of this activity is going to fizzle out, though, as it heads southward towards the Red River. But there's an outside chance, about a 10% chance, that far northern yep. and northwestern portions of the area uh, see one of those Automated straggling weather. showers or storms cross the Red storm. River. Coming up, we do have, I think, the hottest temperatures of the summer on tap this weekend, but there may be some improvement next week. We I'll run down all the details with your seven-day forecast in a few minutes. Okay, Dan, see you shortly. Dallas County confirming its first heat-related death of the season. Health and Human Services says the victim was a 79-year-old woman living in the 75227 zip code of southeastern Dallas, south of I-30. They did not say right. when she passed away or if she was inside or outside when found, but she did not have pre-existing medical conditions. A federal judge sentenced a Rowlett woman to it's two beauty. life sentences for orchestrating the murder of her fiancé's ex-girlfriend. Prosecutors say Holly Elkins goaded her right, fiancé into killing 24-year-old Alyssa Burkett. Burkett right, was seven. brutally murdered outside her workplace in 2020, shot in the head, stabbed more than 40 times. Burkett's family members believe it were, if it weren't for Elkins, Burkett might still be alive today. Fox Sports' David Centendry live Tenders at the federal seven. courthouse with the latest. David. Well, it's certainly been a long road for Burkett's family hey, throughout these past four years. Multiple times we have interviewed family members after the arrests, different court cases, etc. Today, after Elkins' sentencing, one family member says that she was the mastermind behind this murder. B-rolls. Package. When someone says, I'm glad you got closure, you know, sometimes I have to say, you know, it's not like that. Russell Forsyth will never experience closure regarding the murder of his granddaughter, Alyssa Burkett. Alyssa was, you know, the victim of an unprovoked attack. In 2020, Burkett was murdered by Andrew Beard, 
the father of Burkett's daughter. Beard used makeup to disguise himself as a black man. Then he shot Burkett in the head with a shotgun and stabbed her 44 times as she arrived at a Carrollton apartment complex where she worked. Beard pled guilty. He was sentenced to 43 years in federal prison. Now, Beard's girlfriend and accomplice, Holly Ann Elkins, who never pled guilty and was convicted by a jury in April, is sentenced to two life sentences by a federal judge Thursday. She definitely was the mastermind. The U.S. Attorney's Office for the Northern District of Texas says Elkins dreamt of a life with Beard and the daughter he shared with Burkett. Beard and Elkins planted drugs and a gun in Burkett's vehicle, then called police to get her in trouble. When that and other plots did not work, they turned to murder. Federal prosecutors say text messages Elkins sent Beard appear to show she pressured him to carry out the murder. She, was, um, she wasn't an innocent bystander. She participated in this all the way. I think without her influence, Andrew would not have committed the murder. Burkett's daughter, Willow, is now five years old. We're very proud of her. She's the light in all of this that keeps us going, to be honest. Willow's grandmother is now the child's guardian. And there was a very telling story just today. She was dropping her off at school, and they were in line. Willow was in the back seat. She said, I miss my other mother. A sign no, that no matter what sentence is given to country. those responsible, there will always be a hole in the collective heart of this family. We can, we can learn from them. We can integrate it into our lives. But I don't think you ever close the book totally on something like this, which is the way I feel about Alyssa. The book is still open with her. Thank you. The Come DOJ on, says that during the murder, Elkins stayed at Beard's home with Burkett's daughter in an effort to create an alibi and then later told investigators Ready that one. Beard was with them Both at the time of the murder. Thank you. Steve, Heather, back to y'all. David, thank you. One's up. The woman charged with fatally striking a Fort Worth Video police scene. officer with her car allegedly told investigators she had consumed nearly a dozen shots of alcohol before the accident happened. Police say 25-year-old Deagile Evans was driving the wrong way, drove on and off ramp onto an I-35W portion where police say she hit and killed Sergeant Billy Randolph. Randolph was working the scene of a previous accident at the time. Court documents reveal Evans kept driving for roughly a quarter of a mile before she jumped out and tried to run away. Officers quickly caught up to her at a nearby motel parking lot. According to the Every arrest affidavit, she told in detectives she had consumed, quote, approximately 10 alcoholic shots prior to the accident and also stated she was drunk. Three. She's currently in jail for intoxication manslaughter, causing the death of a peace officer. A nurse was on her way to work when she witnessed anyway. people being attacked. This was on 635, so she got out to help and then became a victim Payroll. herself. Megan Smith was one of several people caught in the chaos in the northeast of Dallas Sweet Road. You see it right there. D3 this is last D3. week. The suspect, 26-year-old Angel Moreno, accused of using his car, a knife, and other people's cars, including Smith's, to carry out those attacks. Pardon. Smith shared her experience tonight with Fox 4's Peyton Yeager, who joins us now live. Peyton. Heather, Megan Smith has second-degree burns, a broken wrist, and road rash. She spoke to us this afternoon after a doctor's appointment. It's still difficult for her to recall that terrifying morning when she didn't even know if she would survive. Rolls. I break down a lot when my husband's spending the hour or so it has been taking to do the bandage changes. I'm so looking forward to them only taking half the amount of time now that they're healing. This is Megan Smith. She doesn't want to show her face due to her injuries. Still a lot of swelling in my hand. But you may recognize her from this cell phone video in the red scrubs. A man on a rampage carjacked her Nissan Altima and then ran her over. Last Tuesday, Smith, a nurse, was on the way to work on 635. Dallas police say 26-year-old Angel Zamora Moreno started fighting a man after a multi-vehicle crash. Another driver tried to stop the fight, but was stabbed multiple times by Moreno. Moreno then got into a TxDOT truck and hit the TxDOT worker with his own vehicle. I'm running up to him. He's trying to get up, and I'm like, no, 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 stay still, stay still. And he's like, no, he's coming after us. And that's when I realized my vehicle was moving. I thought he was trying to flee. Police say Moreno jumped in Smith's car and started driving toward her. 
Smith was pinned underneath her own vehicle and then dragged. And you were conscious the whole time. So what were you thinking, feeling when you're underneath that car? I was your thinking, own car? what the fuck? I just remember screaming and Jesus. thinking that was it. Thankfully, a witness ran to Smith's Ultima and turned the car off. It took several people to pin down the 26-year-old until police arrived. Moreno faces a list of charges, for both including of seven counts of aggravated assault. Everyone rushed to the hospital, survived their injuries. Smith was released the next day. Everybody says, you know, I may have changed the course of events. Turn up. Maybe pulled the aggression off of the text dot worker. We're all alive. And I can't say that if I didn't stop, he would have stopped. Yep. Okay, three's up. Smith okay, tells two, me two she hasn't been able to get in contact with, te with the text dot worker. However, she did talk on the phone with the man who was stabbed. Last time she talked to him, he was in the hospital, but he told her he's expected to survive. Heather? Peyton Yeager, thank you. Two's up. Five people, including two doctors, are facing charges in connection to the death of Friends star Matthew Perry. Perry died in October from a ketamine she? overdose. Prosecutors say he received she? several injections on the day he died from his personal assistant, who has now pleaded guilty. Prosecutors say the group preyed on Perry's history of addiction in the final months of his life. Fox's Matthew Seedorf has our story. See, Ross. <laughs> Five people arrested in what authorities describe as an underground criminal network tied to the ketamine death of star actor Matthew Perry. These defendants took advantage of Mr. Perry's addiction issues to enrich themselves. Best known for his role as Chandler Bing on the popular TV show Friends. In part of the drowning. Last October, the 54-year-old was found dead in a hot tub outside his home in Pacific Palisades. The medical examiner later finding ketamine in his blood, roughly the amount used for general anesthesia. Matthew Perry sought treatment for depression and anxiety. When clinic doctors refused to increase his dosage, he turned to unscrupulous doctors. Exclusive Fox 11 video shows Dr. Salvador Placencia pacing as police use a search warrant to raid his home in Santa Monica. 42-year-old doctor, along with Dr. Mark Chavez, Eric Fleming, the actor's personal assistant, Kenneth Iwamasa, and Jasmine Sonia, also known as the Ketamine Queen, all now face federal charges. They knew what they were doing was wrong. They knew what they were doing was risking great danger to Mr. Perry. Text messages show the two doctors discussing how much to charge the actor for ketamine. Dr. Placencia messaging, I wonder how much this moron will pay, and let's find out. Another text involves the so-called ketamine queen and a sample of the drug writing, if he likes it, which I'm confident he will, he has to pay me back. Never thought that something like this would happen with my next door neighbor. Jamie Jude lives in the same apartment building described in the court documents as Sonia's stash house. There's always people going in and out of the apartment carrying briefcases and stuff. So we knew that something was kind of off. She was facing very significant federal charges were these five continuing to sell T's coming up. or other drugs after Perry's death? T's I can't tell A, D, that and B. in terms of where they were selling? No, oh, like in terms of afterwards where they said. What I can say is that we searched the home of one of the defendants following Mr. Perry's death. She had 80 vials of ketamine, thousands of pills of methamphetamine, cocaine, bottles of Xanax. After Perry's death, another text between the group reportedly said, delete all Stay our back. messages. Authorities also now tying the so-called ketamine queen to the death of a 35-year-old man in 2019. Matthew Cedorf, Fox News. These are A city of Dallas mistake is causing big frustration in one Dallas neighborhood and could end up costing a developer thousands of dollars. Also ahead tonight, former President Trump and Vice President Harris both hit the campaign trail talking about prices and the economy. <laughs> And a new round of talks is underway, hoping to achieve a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. The latest from the tense negotiations, coming up on Fox 4 News at 9. 4, 3, 2, 1, 3. Next video and see. Okay. One and done, baby.